For me, the personal journey in hunting in Kentucky goes back six years. I am just enamored with this style of hunting. Tried many a times last year, never really had anything come together on me. Been deer hunting for 24 years, but this is my first crack at a velvet whitetail. Oh, there's a big one. Jeff as far above the lightning as we can, so maybe he'll stay a little while and get to our stand. And we're sitting, like I said, way up on top of that hill, and there's a little slide and a drop off down into a holler that we're going to be sitting over and kind of looking. It's real picturesque. We're about 25 feet up or so, and uh, just going to kind of let it let it happen, see what comes in. The biggest key about hunting this time of the year is seeing deer in daylight on your scouting cameras. If you see some in daylight, people laugh about us hunting when it's this hot. But if you can find them in daylight this time of the year, you got a really good chance to take one. We're going straight up. We're going to put it in crawl mode. Work our way to the top of the mountain. She's a steep one. We have made it to the top of the mountain. Now we're going to go down into a little bottom here and a little slide. We got wind. You usually don't, you know, we're getting wind around these storms right now. So it sure is nice to have it to help you pick a location, but it also helps you cover your movements. So, pretty rare this time of the year. It's uh, about 3.30 p.m. right now. I'm just gonna jump in the R-Max, head down the road. It gets dark somewhere around 8, 8.30, so I'm gonna get out there nice and early. Some rain might be rolling in. Looks like pretty patchy according to the, the radar. Bucks have been showing up, believe it or not, even though it's super hot, pretty early, um, as early as 5, 5.30. So hopefully get in there, give it an hour to rest, settle down a little bit, and never know what we're gonna see. Finally made it 
at the stand opening night and uh, drastically changed since last year. It's cool because we still have the salt river right behind us, so that's awesome. But just a little bit of soybeans in front of us, and it's even like filled with the weeds and stuff too. The rest of it's just kind of plowed and tilled up fields, but I have two shooting lanes, one to my left, one to my right, potentially one out front. That'd be worst case scenario. Probably anywhere from 17 to 20 yards right now. We plan on getting here around five o'clock. It's five o'clock, brutally hot when that sun comes out. Hopefully that wind consistently starts coming at us and doesn't turn his back on us, but now it's pretty much just gonna be a waiting game. Got a couple hours from when they were coming out in the past, so we'll see. But the crazy thing about Kentucky, just like last year, is you never know what's gonna come out, when it's gonna come out, so it's kind of to be ready and vigilant as much as I possibly can and see what we can make happen. He should be dead. <laughs> wow. I've come to Kentucky a lot, and I, I live in the moment on what's going on. <clears throat> I get excited on a hunt. I love this spot. I thought it was cool for the moment that Jeff and I came in here and started setting it up. They showed me a couple of pictures of that Dylan Velvet. He's just come out of Velvet in the last 24 hours. You can see a big piece out hanging off the side. He was all shiny like that. and. I just thought he was a cool deer. He's got big, long tines. I 
you can't pass one up when they look that good. He came in, you can see him down there. We, we got busted earlier, some does busted us. And I could see a big body. He, I, don't, I guess he came out of that side of that holler right there. And he just came in, was pushing that other buck around. And when he kind of branched up and gave me that broadside shot, I said, you know what? That's backstraps, big antlers. And Kentucky looks good to me. <laughs> God, that's awesome. I mean, when he first come out, I go, that's that deer, but, you know, but his velvet was gone. I mean, and they come out of velvet like this and about half the pictures we've seen this year are out of velvet. And I've shot two big ones in velvet in the last couple of years. And, and I'm, I'm, it's just like, God, what a pretty deer. And when he posed and he raised his head up like that, I was like, I can't pass that. That's too perfect right there. And that's the deer that they were talking about that had been coming down into this two track out of these two hollers here. We'd seen 10 does, a couple of fawns, a beautiful set. I mean, it couldn't have been a, a prettier day. The only thing I'm disappointed is I don't get a set tomorrow <laughs> because that was about as fun as it's gonna get. Now what, 19 yards from where we're sitting here. And uh, we just let it fly. The old blackout did its trick. And, shooting those MX-6 micro damage. I fell in love with those really last year, just how they fly, how they work. And I mean, the Gator Broadhead, I mean, it's that's, you know, the typical talk up here in the stand. We start talking about all the sponsors we're shooting, but man, the performance has been phenomenal for me. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> That would be the prime example, in my opinion, of what love and blood looks like. For those of you looking at it, you can kind of see that pink all across it. I mean, we had a total pass through, which we knew the gator broadheads were fully extended. I mean, that hole is just covered in blood. That's, that makes you feel good when you, when you saw the impact and where everything went in at. I'd say confidence is pretty high right there. Here. Oh, you love it when they don't go very far, folks. That's what you do this when you practice. That's what you're looking to do right there. You don't want them to go far. He didn't go far at all. That's perfection right there. Oh, thank you, buddy. I mean, this guy here, he got turned all around. Golly, that's some blood on that one right there, folks. What a buck. That's the exit wound right there. You, Saw all of his tines out there. That's his velvet. We've got pictures of him in velvet just a day or so ago, right out there. It just came out of it, and that's what happens this time of the year when you're down here. When they lose their velvet there for a while, they just kind of go do their own thing. This guy came in, put on the perfect show. The best thing about it, we performed exactly like what we were trying to do. We made a good shot on him dropped him the way we wanted to. And now we're done, we're gonna enjoy time in camp, help everybody else get one, tell stories, and enjoy Kentucky. That was too fun.
There's a big one. Big one. ridiculous. Thing, I'd say it's a little bit low, but it felt good. It, I thought it was a hard shot. He didn't act like a hard shot, though. Oh, I gotta see that footage. Oh, man. Well, I did not get a, a full pass through, which I never like, and uh, I probably should have waited for him to step forward, but it looks like it still slipped in the pocket. Hoping for the best. <laughs> I don't know, it just happened so quick. And like I was just saying a second ago before the camera turned on, it's shooting a target. Doesn't matter how many times you try to even just sit there and visualize it being a real deer, it's never the same. But I felt good about my shot. I mean, I hit where I was aiming. I just should have waited for him to step forward with that one leg. So hopefully I, uh, Hopefully I got him where it counted, but. <sighs> wow. Unbelievable. <sighs> oh, holy smokes, man. What an animal. Amazing. It is just something else. Uh, there, I mean, he could have been shedding this velvet tomorrow, but he held it long enough for me. And he's just a gorgeous, gorgeous beast. I'm so thankful. Wow. And he stinks. Man, we're a ways from the rut, but holy smokes, I can smell his scent glands. But this is my first velvet whitetail. Super thankful for it. So 
we're gonna go get the Armax and I think we both might even be able to get it right down this trail right here. Stuck in it. Looks like it might be a little back, but it, 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 it. where did they come from? They were the ones that I saw coming. Yeah, but wait, I mean, I'm, I'm watching those three up there. They were right here. Did they step out right here? Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> he got. 
got an arrow in one. We got an arrow in them. Let's sit, let's wait, let's give them some time. As this is happening, then those darn storms came that we were worried about the entire time. There's lightning going off all over us. It's starting to get dark. And right as we're about to get down, I could see my lighted knock out in the field. So we were just about, maybe we've probably given it 15, 20 minutes. We were just about to kind of make our way down. I stood up and now that it's a lot darker, I can see my lighted knock right now. I didn't know if there was a body run or anything, but looking at it, I could barely see it moving. So he is right there. He's probably about 100, 125 yards out. So we're gonna give it plenty of time. And uh, I can see it. That's just oh, so relieving, makes me feel so good. I don't care if it takes all night. I'm gonna wait until he's good to go. And we don't wanna push him. That's the very last thing that we wanna do. So that just goes to show you. If you're not sure about your shot, just give it plenty of time because he could literally be right around the corner. I mean, we were that close to getting out on the stand. <sighs> Keep it up right here. <sighs> Show the footage to everyone, hoping in my mind that Jeff or Wade was going to say, oh yeah, that's a lethal shot, he's dead. We'll give him another hour and we'll go. No, I don't, there's no light on him. He's going to die. Yeah. There's, I mean, it's just, it's way back and high. Wade said we're gonna give it the morning, probably head out there around nine o'clock and go see what we can find. Storms came through last night. Um, looks like more storms are coming in around nine o'clock. So because of that, we got some dogs are gonna go out there a little earlier than we originally planned just to see if we can track them down. And a couple of guys even looked at the shot and everything again and they're thinking liver, hoping liver. I mean, fingers crossed. I do hope that's the case as well, but we're gonna give it a shot, see what we got out there and uh, hopefully we can find them here soon. And he was in this area somewhere. Oh, so he's pretty steep. That's a pretty yeah. steep angle. And then arrow's probably 20, 30 yards over here. Yeah, it just pulled out. And I think, I think he dove back in, but they were all milling about by that down tree over there for the longest time before they came in. And we never saw him that tree. Right. So Let's go find that arrow just out of curiosity. Got guts on it. Y'all can see those other deer right up here, right? Uh, they were more over here. Over here. Yeah. Like literally and just he right never, the down tree. He, we never saw him go that way, so he went in right in there. Alright. So we went down to where the, the down tree was, because we knew that's where all the bucks and everything were kinda hanging out beforehand, and all I remember. Wade was walking in front of me, and I just see Wade raise up his hands. I'm thinking, oh boy, he was there. We got him. We're good. Oh, yes. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh, something got to him. Coyotes. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh. Oh. Like my. <laughs> oh. Heck yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, talk about a long, long night. But thankfully he didn't go far. Oh man, check that out. That is too cool. Oh goodness. Thank you, big guy. Oh man. Thankfully he was only probably about a hundred yards from there, but wow. That is beautiful. My goodness. Whew. Did it, Kevin. We did it. <laughs> All three guys got a deer on opening night. Thank you, Kentucky. Wow. Overwhelming relief came over me. There was no better feeling than being able to walk up to him right there and just being able to see his mass, his size, and my first velvet buck that I've ever shot and you know, being able to do it with a bow out of all things, opening night in Kentucky was such a cool experience. It was so much fun. And man, I, I just, uh, such a great feeling overall. What a great opening day. I don't think he, I mean, three for three. We all shot them within <laughs> almost minutes of each other. You could script things better than that. I mean, but that's Kentucky. It could happen or you could go home empty handed. You know, I've done both I've, uh, several times. I've hunted over here six years now and love every one of them and I've tagged out sometimes and sometimes I put the tag in my pocket and taking it home as a souvenir. It's why I like Kentucky. I love the scenery, I like the backdrop, I love the people that we hunt with, I like the camaraderie. I mean, it's just a really, really cool, great adventure and we took three great deer to kick off this season for us and uh, everybody's grinning, everybody's happy and can't wait till next year. The planning has already begun. <laughs>